consistent with standard books of moral and spiritual codes. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Manamapisha Chiputra Matra Surupam Rupam Tasya Gajamura Purinata Yangoshta Tini Radha Kundam Garivara Prapto yasya pratita kripaya shri guru tamatos Vande ham shri guru shri atak pada kamalam shri guru vaishnavascha Shri rupam sakrajatam Sahagana yakuna tanditam tam sahiba Sadvaitam sabadhutam parijana sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shivardha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Shalaka Tamasya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare within Vedic culture, the two classes of leaders of the public are the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas. Um, both of whose roles as leaders, Srila Prabhupada uh, mentions in the purport, he especially uh, explains about the role of the Acharya the brahmana, the spiritual leader, from the context of this verse within the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, it's clear that Sri Krishna is particularly talking about civic leaders, uh, the leaders of the people in general. He's given the example of Janak Maharaj, there are many great devotees of the Lord, among whom Janaka is mentioned as one of the twelve uh, particular authorities. But Janak Maharaj is mentioned in this connection not only because he's a great devotee, but because he is a civic leader. The whole point that's being mentioned here, here is that one has to work. One has to do some work. Not one cannot simply retire from all activities, or at least Krishna is not recommending that. He's recommending, uh, especially for Arjuna, he's not against the uh, he's not against the sannyas order. He speaks about that in in uh, Bhagavad Gita also. But for most people. Uh, they have to work in this world and they should work according to their Varnashram duty and be Krishna conscious at the same time. So um, Krishna is pointing this out to Arjuna that he's a leader of the people. He's a Kshatriya. He's, uh, people look up to him. Uh, and people in general, they tend to follow the... Uh, yeah, the, the civic leaders or secular leaders. The, ex the example of the renunciants isn't even meant for the common people. And the example of renouncing the world, most people are not ready for that. It's not recommended for them. So even if one is, Krishna here is making the point, even if one is very spiritually advanced, uh, he has to consider not only his own spiritual progress, but seeing that others will look up to him, uh, what example is he setting for others also? Uh, you know, Krishna was uh, particularly con concerned with, uh, Arj with Arjuna and through Arjuna's 
uh, example, he's preaching to the whole world. So we can see that Krishna, he's also concerned with the uh, political situation. Rajanya Vangsha Dahanana Apavaga Virya. He is praised by Kunti Devi as he who literally burns or destroys the uh, kings or the, the members of the kingly class, the political class, who present uh, obstacles in the path of liberation for the people. So Krishna, he's, uh, he, he's concerned to establish within society uh, godly rule and therefore he uh, took the part of the Pandavas he was very concerned that the Pandavas rule uh, because if such persons are in charge of the uh, state, the administration of the state then the people will be benefited by the a good example they set, and by the whole ethos which they set up. Yeah. Uh, people are influ as influenced by leaders. As Srila Prabhupada writes here, people in general always require a leader who can teach the people by practical behavior. Mm. Now I'm going to speak about Narendra Modi. You may wonder, well, why am I going to speak about him? Because we're, we're not concerned with materialistic politicians. We're concerned with Krishna, with spiritual life. Um, but I'm going to speak about it. One reason is that, of course, you're all here gathered to hear about Bhagavad Gita. You're very interested in spiritual topics. But people in general are not. If it, m m people are more interested to hear about Narendra. People in general are more interested to hear about Narendra Modi than to hear about Krishna. And the evidence of that is any newspaper. <laughs> <coughs> but we should also uh, be concerned, especially because he is the head of the most important country in the world from the spiritual point of view, which is this country, India, which is supposed to lead the world spiritually. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was also interested in the condition of India. He would see the newspapers, especially at the time of the emergency. He was interested in what was going on. He, he uh, wanted to meet Indira Gandhi and give her a program for managing the country which included her retirement, because he didn't want a woman in charge. <laughs> so we should be interested, and especially um, we can be interested because he is, or he, re he represents a party, and himself he is... Uh, dedicated to Hindutva, which we're not fully... Of course, it's not clearly defined what Hindutva is, although there have been efforts to do that, to explain it as the the original culture of India. But, uh, well, in that sense, we're also interested. We're not interested in, in, in Hindutva in the case of smashing Muslims and Christians, or anyone for that matter, although that... In governance, uh, sometimes smashing people is required, but not particularly because they belong to any particular group if they're misbehaved. So in that sense, we do support it. Although in the sense of it being a we versus us kind of mentality, we don't support it. But the, that he wants to revive Indian culture, the so we're also interested in that. So there's some hope is there. So um, because he's prominent and popular and people have hope in him, then uh, without uh, going into how we can approach him and this and that, uh, 
as a, as a movement, as an organization. Just some things we can learn from him. Uh, of course, our main uh, standard or role model is Srila Prabhupada and the great Vaishnava Acharyas. But again, as uh, he's prominent and popular, we can learn some things from him. I don't recommend that we delve deeply into his character and study it very deeply. That we, we can study the personalities of the great Acharyas and see what we can learn from them. But um, as, yeah, as he's much in the news, we can learn some things. One thing... Uh, we can learn his his overall drive. He's de definitely a very dynamic person. Is uh, he wants to make India great? Well, we do also. Maybe not. Maybe in not the same way that he is emphasizing industry and all these things. But actually, India is great by her culture, and we are, we are also interested. Srila Prabhupada means Srila Prabhupada is very interested in reviving the original culture and that India should lead the world by spiritual strength. Um, and at our own little level, because we are more definitely in terms of how the world sees us, we are more in we are more in the category of Itara rather than Srishta. Itara means Srishta means the best, you all know that word and this you know that word? It comes in Tamil? No. It does? It also comes. Okay. You never know in Tamil. So it means the best, and itara means everyone else. <laughs> You'll find that's quite a common word in Bhagavatam. What is that? Imang hi vishvam bhagavani vetara. This world is uh, different from the Lord. And the same also. Non different. Uh, different and non different. So, uh, Krishna tara. That's a term Bhaktisthan Saraswati used to use. That. Seeing things as different from Krishna. Or considering things different. Anyway, we are more in the category of common people. So, at, But at our level, we can also think, just like those of you here, most of you are serving at Iskon in Velor, you can also think how to make Iskon Velor great. Not in the sense of competing with others. That may be there to some extent, but not. Srila Prabhupada also encouraged competition to some extent, not to the extent of we want to show that we're better so that everyone will praise us more than you. But uh, we can also think that, that, oh, someone has served Krishna so nicely, so we shall try to do the same and more. And then they will try to, to emulate us, and then we. Let there be a competition to serve Krishna in the best possible way. But we, or, yeah, we, I'm also involved here. <laughs> you can also think how to make this a very great center of Krishna consciousness. We can go through our life day by day just getting up in the morning, doing our sadhana seriously, which is good, and going out and preaching, and we can go on like that. But if we have a vision of how it should be great and that people, everyone in the city will be uh, respectful and pleased and they will look up to this center as a, a great center of spiritual leadership for the whole area. That we want to establish. There's already a famous temple in Vela, recently established. But no one thinks of it as a spiritual center. It's a temple, but it's he has no spiritual life whatsoever. It's more like a monument. <laughs> uh, well, there, already there's a, the old monument is there in the city, and there's, now there's a new monument. So you want to give actual spiritual life, that when people come they can immediately perceive by the atmosphere this is something very spiritual. I, I remember the first time I came to one of Srila Prabhupada's temples, I'd never been to as far as I remember, I'd never been to any temple of any kind prior to that. Pretty, Yeah, there were hardly any temples in England at that time. I was immediately struck that this atmosphere is something completely different to anything I've ever experienced. 
a very spiritual atmosphere. Just everything about it, the, the devotees and the, the, the pictures and the incense and but mostly the devotees themselves because because we are so we can we we can go to many temples and find that they're dead. And sometimes sometimes even the deities and it looks like they're just some statues because there's no one there to accept any worship because there's no spirit of worship. So we, we want to make uh, this a great center. And for that, well, we're going to have to work very hard. And that's something also we can learn from Narendra Modi. He, he's dedicated, he has a vision, and he works very hard. So that we can also learn. It's not that just by... Uh, in in some ISKCON temples, they say, they say a prayer every morning. Oh, the name of the deities! If you so desire, make this, bring more devotees, so we can increase the book to you. Build this, and every a few devotees just mumble along with it. But it's not. It's just a ritual. But uh, we have to make it. We we have to make it our life. If this is if. If things are actually going to happen in an extraordinary way in Krishna consciousness, then we're going to have to come to the platform that Srila Prabhupada was on, at, uh, or at least uh, imbibe that mood of really wanting to do something significant for Krishna. If we're in that mood, then there, may be, there, where there will be many tests, no doubt. And things may not happen immediately. That just, well, I want everything wonderful for Krishna. Okay, well, okay, Krishna, do something. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen Im immediately. It might not happen to the extent that we uh, envision. But we have to try. But you know, Thakur, to toward the end of his life, was express he expressed disappointment that although so many wonderful things had happened, so many uh, untoward things had also happened. So we don't know what's going to happen in this world, but undoubtedly Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur he did uh, amazing service, and that was carried on and brought to the next level by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And that was carried on and brought to the next level by Srila Prabhupada, our own Srila Prabhupada. And we should, as Srila Prabhupada said, we should at least, at least maintain what I've given you if you can't expand. But actually we should expand. In many ways we, the movement has expanded since Srila Prabhupada left and in some ways uh, it's declining also. So expand doesn't just mean the number of buildings and the number of people with tilak on their foreheads, but it also means uh, that actually the standards should improve and, and not decline. So that's another whole discussion. We have to work hard. Um, oh, one thing I should mention, from leaders in general, what are the qualities of a successful leader? The, Organization, we, we can break it down as organizational skills, determination, abilities to deal with different kinds of people. So uh, these are the general uh, traits of a successful leader. There are some of them. But uh, I don't want to discuss that in particular just now, just some things which are particularly related with uh, Narendra Modi, who had the present time is very popular. We don't know. Uh, he may be very unpopular after some time. It often happens that uh, as Srila Prabhupada writes in the purple, what is that? The uh, Kama Shen Indriya Preeti, I, I believe it's in that verse in the purple. He writes that the, leader, the, the leaders of the people, they get the votes by promising people sense gratification, but then the people become frustrated with them because they can't supply it to the degree which the people want. <laughs> so, the incumbency effect is often there in the elections. And whoever's in power, people become fed up with them, whoever it is. 
generally speaking, that's so. Uh, there's high hope at the present time. One uh, program we definitely uh, support that he's uh, behind is cleaning the Ganga. How did the Ganga, how was it allowed that the Ganga was allowed to become so dirty? And what to speak of Yamuna, is much worse condition than Ganga. So we'd, we'd very much like to see that. We, sh we should support that. But he also has a program of industrialization. I don't see how the two things are going to go together very well because uh, much of the industry is polluting the, the rivers. In the Western countries, they've managed to uh, combine the two things, but um, they, they've cleaned up the rivers. It used to be said at the Tyne River in Newcastle, if you, in, in England, that if you uh, jump off the bridge into the river, then you won't drown in the river, you'll die of the fumes before you hit the river. <laughs> I don't know if that's an exaggeration, but it did come in the news in the River Thames, the most famous river and the biggest river in England. It's about the size of some minor river in England, in, in India, that uh, they, actually saw, they actually saw some fish in it in London, because for so many years there had been no fish because of the pollution. So it is possible, but then that puts restrictions and restraints on the industries, and then that makes them less competitive. And one reason why India and China are coming up is because they don't bother with all these environmental rules or labor rules, and they just exploit the people and destroy the environment, and therefore they can supply goods at cheap rates to the countries which have all these rules. <laughs> so that's a bit of a political conundrum. But yes, the Ganga should be clean. And also he started the what is it, Swaj Bharat Abhiyan, the Clean India Movement. So yeah, we're all for that too. Why, why is there so much garbage thrown here and there, and everywhere? And in something which people coming from the West they notice that. It's, it's quite noticeable. That piles of garbage everywhere. One theory I have is that traditionally there was the uh, class which is called in Indian English the scavenger class. or the, they, they, Their job is to clean up, but there, there are not enough of them to... Uh, uh, there are not enough of them to do the job. So... Uh, but still, it should it should be uh, shouldn't have all this. So we should also in our temple. I I I see in our temples in India we have these beautiful temples and there's just so many places. There's just garbage is thrown everywhere. One time I came into Mayapur, came into the car park and got down from the bus and just all garbage everywhere. And that's the first impression that peep visitors get. And so he's, cleanliness you have to be on you have to be on top of it all the time because people are always throwing garbage here and there. At least we can train our, our devotees to not to throw just this habit of just throwing garbage here, there and everywhere. Just like yesterday I arrived and uh, garlands were being offered to me and one was in a plastic bag and one devotee just took a, took a garland out of the plastic bag and threw it down on the f And what, what is he thinking? Some Someone's going to come behind him and clean it up or... <laughs> This is Krishna's temple. We want Krishna. We want to keep make, make everything very nice for him, and that's a tradition to take the deity out to see his grounds and the guy. And he wanted to. Oh, and here's here's all the garbage. We want to show Krishna all the garbage. So that's a good thing. He's been. We should also promote this uh, cleanliness, and of course. The most important cleanliness is cheto darpana marjanam, cleaning the heart. That's the that's the solution to pretty much all the all the problems that we have. <laughs> of course, birth, death, old age, and disease will be there, but so many problems arise just because of the impurities in our hearts beginning with material desire, beginning with identifying ourselves as the body, all this 
in this uh, tension between Hindus and Muslims, as Srila Prabhupada pointed out, that this is not so, it's not really a religious question, it, it's, it's from the bodily concept of life, thinking I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim, I am Nija Paroveti, this is, these are mine and they're, they're another. So, uh, cleaning the heart, we should have a, how we say that, Swach Hridai Andalan, clean heart. And they'll say, yes, yes, very good. Bring down the cholesterol levels. <laughs> but our idea of a clean heart is not to get all the uh, fat that's blocking it out, but to get all the bad thoughts out. So that's possible by chanting the holy names. He's also taken up, um, that was taken up in a, big way by the uh, Am Admi Party, but he's also taking it up, is the uh, anti-corruption. So that would be a good thing also, that there should be uh, vigilance within our movement. Of course, generally we don't discuss these things much, but... Uh, Considering as there's lots of money by at our levels, we're not talking about the thousands of crores floating around at the top governmental levels, but uh, at our level of being ordinary people, uh, there's lots of money floating around our movement, coming in and going out, and uh, there's not there's not much supervision at an executive level. So, I, let, let's not say I suspect, but let, let's say that the, it would appear that considering the culture of the country, <laughs> that uh, there is good likelihood of corruption, monetary, financial corruption within our movement. And there's, it's not an issue which has been addressed or even thought of very much within our moment from time to time cases emerge but uh, yeah it, it better than prevention is better than cure if we can get systems in place to stop that of course it's very difficult to have foolproof systems or if they are they become so uh, restrictive that it's difficult to, what is this double signing and all this kind of thing but uh, you can always bribe the person who's signing also, but there are ways to there are ways to be corrupt even in systems that try to stop it. But, and even in in China, where people are executed for government officials are executed for corruption, from time to time they execute people. So it means that simply executing them doesn't stop the corruption. <laughs> so, but it's something which uh, we should. Be aware of that it's, that uh, temptation will be there. At least we can say temptation will be there. So we should, at, at the very least, try to make systems to to stop any corruption. There's a saying that, uh, what is that? Locks help to keep honest people honest. In other words, if you lock up the money, then it's people they're not going to steal it unless they're a professional thief. But someone who's honest, generally, if they see some money lying around and there's no one there to... There's, of course, nowadays everything's under uh, video surveillance. But, uh, well, not everywhere. So people may think that, well, I could just put this in my pocket and uh, no one would know and... After all, I, I need some money for this and for that, and uh, obviously they don't really need the money that much, otherwise they wouldn't leave it lying around. So locks help to keep honest people honest. So similarly, there should be some uh, system. Exactly what that would be, I don't know, but there must be um, such systems. Also, uh, one thing he's... Uh, not only does he work very hard himself, but he's 
he's cracked the whip on government officials, a government employees, that you have to you have to be at work on time, general, uh, and you have to. He's trying to do something with this massive sector of government employees. Generally, people in India think a government job is a good job because um, you don't have to do any work. And you can't get you can't get thrown out of the job, so he wants to crack down on that and get get them where it's it's a massive drain on. Apart from the black money going out of the country, even if the black money is in the country, then at least it's circulating and doing something. But if it's out, if it's outside the country, then it's just uh, it just deteriorates from the, the from the country's development or whatever you want to call it. But, but uh, the, the huge amount of money is spent on government organizations and uh, and uh, often very unproductive. So he's right in doing that. And we should also see that people don't join our movement to become sadhus and just find some corner to hide away in and just do a little semblance of a little service and... Uh, it solves the chapati problem. It's sadhus. Uh, this Indira Gandhi, during the time when when she was in power, then there was a census, and there were different categories of employees, and she in one category was beggars and sadhus, yes. because it's un, it's supposed that a sadhu is someone who they couldn't get their life together, they got thrown out of their house or whatever. So, anyway, become a sadhu. At least you'll, someone will give you a chapati or two. <laughs> so, there may be such sadhus, but we shouldn't be such sadhus. Again, we should be busy and active, and we should see, as Srila Prabhupada said, that the temple is not a place for lazy or crazy people. Everyone should be active. It doesn't mean also that we don't give time for sufficient rest and sufficient time for self-study and all these things, but we should see that everyone is busy and engaged. And another thing he's cracking the whip down on is that um, don't live a high life on the government payroll. When he goes overseas, he doesn't bring a big retinue of people. Of people with him, he just brings the number of people needed because it's very six. Of course, considering the thousands of crores that the gov government is dealing with, to take a few extra people with you when you go to Brazil or America or Japan or wherever he goes, wouldn't be very much. But he's doing that clearly to set an example, and he's told the the uh, government ministers and this and that, when they fly around here and there, it's understood they, they're going here and there and they're going to fly because uh, their time is also valuable. We used to see traveling in the trains, political leaders, but I guess they're all in the, in the air now, mostly. Uh, but no first-class travel, he told them. You get, get in the economy class. Don't spend extra. If, or if you, want to, if you want to go first class, then you pay yourself. <laughs> But don't don't put it on the government expense account. So that's good also. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, he uh, he was also concerned about this in India, especially in the in the West. He didn't mind so much. He thought that anyway, the devotees are collecting all the money and uh, let them sp spend as long as they're spending it for Krishna, one way or the other. But in India, he was very concerned that money is coming in from overseas and we shouldn't spend it, any of it for anything more than we need. So we're living on public largesse, we're, we're collecting funds from the public and we shouldn't lead a, uh, a high life or spend unnecessarily thinking that, well, there's plenty of money. If we need to spend, we'd spend. Just like I can give myself as an example that uh, for years I used to travel by train. I still do sometimes, but nowadays I, if it's a longer journey, I'll, I'll travel by plane. So that's for health reasons and also time reason because time is safe, but uh, because of uh, 
health problems, so that may be considered. Srila Prabhupada, when he first started traveling by plane, he would go in what in America was called coach class. That's the cheaper class. Then later, the devotees arranged for his, him to go by first class. So, yeah, we shouldn't... Uh, don't un Of course, householders, if they have their own money, then which they're generating by honest means, then uh, we're, we're not to dictate to them how the husband is quite dynamic. But the idea to um, retire at a certain point. So that's, very, that, that's good also, that someone has a position within our society for the sake of serving the mission, and it's not necessary that they stay on and on and on. They can retire at some point, even for the sake of their own spiritual development. When you get older, toward the end of life, you just want to concentrate on hearing and chanting about Krishna. And there's also the, the point that, that if one is in some position, one may become attached to that and see one's identity like that and uh, forget that my real identity is to be a servant of Krishna, not not to be a ruler of my little project or whatever it is. Um, of course, there could be many things, but I just made a few points here. Uh, one thing is that uh, in Gujarat especially, maybe in other places also, his name Narendra Modi is often shortened to Natmo. So that's the most important thing. We can learn to bow down to Krishna. <laughs> namo namaha. Vaishnavibhyo namo namaha. So that we don't learn directly from him, but from that acronymical... Is, that, is, is it an acronym? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, we can always remember to bow down to Krishna. So there's just a few points. Hare Krishna. Any question, comment? Yeah. Oh, he gave Bhagavad Gita, yeah. He gave Gandhi's Bhagavad Gita to Barack Obama. Then he gave a Japanese Gita to the head of the Japanese government. So that was, don't know, but it's probably Prabhupada's Gita because there won't be that many editions of Gita in Japanese, I guess. He gave to the Chinese president a Mandarin edition. Again, that's likely to be Prabhupada's because unless he's making a point to get some other edition. <laughs> There's a great difference if you read Prabhupada's rendition of Bhagavad Gita or Gandhi's or Lokmanya Tilak's or Aurobindo's or it's, it, it's something you would think you're reading a completely different text it's yeah that's a good thing good point Uh, what is that? I don't have anything better than this to give you. Yeah, and a gift. Uh, there, there's no better gift than this, in other words. And 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 the world doesn't have more than this to gain. The world doesn't have more than this to gain. It's quoted as saying that. Yeah. So that's good. He's giving out. So that, that he wants to promote that this is the. This is the gift of India. Otherwise, what do you give to a leader? What what do people give? Some handicrafts or something like that. I don't know. What do they give as gifts? I have no idea. But it's come to come to public attention that he's giving Bhagavad Gita's. So that uh, sentiment for Bhagavad Gita is there. We saw in that case in Russia, Tomsk, I think was the name of the city, when there was a case made against Bhagavad Gita as it is of, from all sides, well maybe probably not from the BAM, from the left front, but from the Congress, JD, as well as BJP, there was a 
great outcry that how can how can they be against our Bhagavad Gita? So that's good. Hmm? The ministers they have to take their oath in Sanskrit. They took their oaths in Sanskrit. Yeah, so some interesting developments. I, I believe also the RSS BJP program is to uh, rewrite the history of India and make it more accurate. The the history that's taught generally is that which was inherited from the British. It is a sensitive topic because there's a lot of if if you're going to write the history as it is, there's a lot of uh, bad dealings during the time of the Muslim rule, Mughal rule, we should say. Um, and it's feared that if that is taught, that that will create feelings, bad feelings between the Hindus and the Muslims. But anyway, it's, the truth shouldn't be hidden. But then what is the history? It's all, history is all subjective anyway. <laughs> mm. But well, there are certain facts of history, no doubt. A lot of it's interpretive also. People are doing good things to hide whatever bad they've done in the past. I don't exactly understand what you mean. He's doing some good things to hide the bad things he's done in the past. For instance, the uh, aftermath of the Godra massacre. Well, it's not usually presented as that. Is the the fact that it, the bunch of Hindus, mostly women and children, were killed is largely neglected in the blame of him. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I'm not making a case here that we're going to make uh, Narendra Modi the 13th Mahajan. <laughs> <laughs> Every politician has some blood on their hands, either di mostly indirectly these days. But that was there in the time of Always, it's always there. In fact, in in Vedic culture, or even in pre-democratic culture, it, it, it's a qualification to be a leader that you literally have blood on your hands. You have to be able to go out and fight. Otherwise, how can you protect the people unless you can fight? So, yeah, yeah. I I don't want to get into an in-depth analysis of the pros and cons of Narendra Modi, but I just thought it was something that might capture people's interest to Chandra Shaka Nyai. We uh, bring, the att bring the attention of someone to something which they're familiar with to uh, point out something which they're less familiar with. Just like the mother may say to the child, you see the branch of the tree and that gold ball just above that, that's the moon. Mm. Yeah. Rallies for how far should we go in supporting such projects as cleaning the Ganga? There are rallies for it. Yeah, we can go to such rallies and chant Hare Krishna, do Hari Nam, and have us have a hold up a banner saying Jai Gange, Hare Krishna, something like this. Why not? And that was a standard thing that devotees used to do. When Srila Prabhupada was uh, in, in some of the earliest days of the movement, there was some peace march and devotees joined and chanted Hare Krishna. So why not? We can join that. The, it doesn't necessarily mean, when we join such rallies, it doesn't necessarily mean we support their cause, but in this case we do. 
So yeah, we can chant Hare Krishna and distribute Prabhupada's books and distribute prasadam. How far we want to go, that's something that as a movement we have to discuss. That sh there, there are devotees in our movement who are talking about uh, kshatriya activities adjusted to the modern day. That means interacting with the political leaders, uh, yes. so scope is there. But as a movement, as as a whole, our movement, uh, Srila Prabhupada, as I understand his vision for that, is that we should be a Brahminical movement. So we may not ourselves uh, get involved in directly in politics, but rather we can give advice to the political leaders, although it may be that uh, some devotees, they also um, get into politics, although it's a, it's a very nasty field, actually. <laughs> very, uh, but the, the thrust, or, or the, the, the main core of our movement is meant to be Brahminical. Uh, Srila Prabhupada also encouraged that uh, In God We Trust political party. He said it's a platform to preach our principles. But then uh, he thought it, it seemed, he disbanded it. Uh, he, it seems that he thought he was taking up too much attention of the devotees who are uh, diverting away from the core activities of distributing Srila Prabhupada's mm -hmm. books and Harinam. And exactly. The whole reason why Prabhupada he uh, put a stop to the political activities of our devotees in America is not completely clear. Um, but it's as Srila Prabhupada also said, it's it's the Christian conscious movement should touch all sectors of human life, including the political, and it is a major area as we see. The Bhagavad Gita was spoken in a political context. Krishna wanted Arjuna to act in a certain way for ultimate